What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of Delmar Glaze, who the Las Vegas Raiders took in the third round of the 2024 NFL Draft. And some people believe this guy can start as the Raiders' right tackle. Now, there's definitely some upside with Glaze. But there's also some issues on tape. We're going to get into all of that in this video. Very, very excited for it. One of the things that pops right away with Glaze is, at times, he's a crushing run blocker. At times, he gets physical, he gets low, and he absolutely moves people the way you see on this one here. But then at the same time, you have plays like this, where he's a little late out of his stance, he's not able to make good contact, he gets chopped, and then his quarterback ends up taking a massive hit. Blaze, to me, is a very interesting prospect, because there's definitely pros and cons with this guy. So today, we're going to analyze it, let's just get right into the tape. So one of the things you're going to notice with Delmar Glaze is he's very solid when it comes to being able to explode out of his stance. One of the things Glaze does over and over and over again consistently is get out when it comes to being able to set up and pass pro. So I think for the Raiders, this is going to be the one thing that you're really going to be able to work with when it comes to Glaze. Now, he does have issues in pass pro, which we'll get into over the course of this video. But the one issue he doesn't have is getting out of his stance and being able to beat the defensive end to his spot. One of the very important concepts for a tackle is if a tackle is able to get out and hit the landmark prior to this defensive end, but what ends up happening is the tackle is now set up in a good spot to be able to take on either inside move or an outside move. And this is how some of the best tackles end up winning, right? You got to be able to hit your landmark. If you're slow out of your stance, you can get speed rush. A guy can beat you to the outside. And if you're not consistently hitting your landmark, well, then you'll overset yourself. And then guys can easily come back to the inside because you're oversetting as a pass blocker. But as you'll see, play in, play out, this guy's so consistent when it comes to getting out of his pass set. He's so consistent being able to hit that landmark, and it definitely allows him to win the way you see here. He does a great job exploding. See how quick he is out of his pass set. Technique, love it. Love the footwork, love the kick step as he's getting vertical. Ends up being able to beat the defensive lineman here, and then he's able to shut him down. Just a really, really solid rep. You got one more here. He's going to once again beat the defensive lineman to the landmark. Once again, he's going to be able to anchor down. Just a really, really solid job. So to me, Glaze definitely has it in his ability to be able to get out fast, be explosive, and get to the spot. You know, there are tackles in the NFL today that are not explosive out of their stance, and it basically leads to them losing. So to me, great trait to have. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. All right, you guys, check this next rep out. Glaze is going to do a really nice job making contact here with number 95. Him and the guard are going to have a double team block, and he's going to do a great job moving 95 off the spot. And he makes sure to climb to number 25, which is his responsibility. The play doesn't work, but in terms of being able to do what he's asked to do in this play, he does a good job. So Glaze does do a nice job when it comes to run blocking and being able to run the power scheme specifically. Here's another one where he does literally the same exact thing. He's going to down block, so really good job down blocking. He's going to climb up to the second level. He's going to pick off the linebacker. Of course, it doesn't work as well because you see a guy ends up kind of beating the block by one of the other offensive linemen. But based off of Glaze's block, based off the double team and the climb, he does his job. Based off of how Glaze has his body set up, the running back would theoretically have a lane to be able to hit that. So pretty nice job on this one by Glaze. Let's get into the next snap. Alrighty, guys. Now, of course, as we get into the tape of some of these guys, we do want to look at some of their struggles. And we're going to look at one of Glaze's biggest issues in my opinion, and it's really a combination of two things. So the first thing you're going to notice is sometimes he is a slow processor. Sometimes when guys move quickly one way or the other, he's not very good being able to make up that ground. He's not very good to see it. And he doesn't necessarily react well to it. And this is a great example of a play where he has a down block on the three technique. It's a super simple block. It doesn't get easier than this. And because the defense tackle is going to slant to the left, you see Glaze just straight up miss. Now, generally speaking, Glaze doesn't have issues with down blocks, right? He does a pretty good job, but that's also assuming guys aren't moving off the spot. In this instance, what the defensive lineman ends up doing is he's going to first slant downwards before he comes over the top. You know, when this offensive line is all blocking down, you get the tackle, the guard, the center. That's going to influence these defensive linemen to also kind of step downwards because they're going to essentially mirror the steps. They have their run fits. They have to stay within a gap. So when this guy here steps down initially, Glaze expects to meet him within a certain spot. But the defense is actually running a run stunt. So what that means is the defensive line is going to step down, but he's going to actually come over the top. And it's the defensive end that's going to slant super hard to the inside. Defenses do this all the time. Now with Glaze specifically, when the defender steps down, he thinks that he'll be able to make contact with this guy. But... The second this defensive tackle slants back to the outside, Glaze isn't able to get his hands on that guy, and the play ends up being ruined because of that right there. 
but I show you guys this play not to only single him out with this one play. It's to set up these next sequence of plays. Starting with this next one right here, you're going to see Glaze as well as the left guard and center take steps to the left. And you're going to see Glaze end up stepping down towards the defensive end. Now, as I stated, left tackle, left guard, center, all step to the left out of their spans. They're essentially stepping towards the D tackle here, the D end here, as well as the corner who is going to actually come off the edge. So this has been identified by the quarterback that there's a blitz coming off the edge. So in this play, Glaze should theoretically step out to that cornerback. But for whatever reason, he ends up stepping with the defensive end downwards while the left guard here is already stepping towards that defensive end. So you're going to basically get two guys on one guy here and you basically get a free guy off the edge. Now, the quarterback does get the ball out, so it doesn't actually matter all that much. But to me in the NFL, you got to be able to process the little things and pick up the guys properly. You got to be able to see things and process the immediate threat. Now, this isn't a massive issue by any means, but there are some plays on tape where you can kind of pull out and say, this guy struggles with being able to process. This guy struggles when things kind of change before the snap. To me, it almost seems like Glaze wants guys to kind of stay in the same spot. And it doesn't work like that in the NFL, right? In the NFL, guys are shifting before the snap. Guys are going to move off the snap a second before the quarterback snaps it. Sometimes guys will run run stunts and guys will run defensive line games. On this one here, you got a defensive line game, and he sees it pretty well. But I think this is the second issue that Glaze sometimes has, which is he doesn't do a good job moving, right? He doesn't do a good job moving in space. And you see on this one, the defensive tackle goes right around Glaze. And he ends up actually beating Glaze. Had the guard not come here on the last moment, the quarterback would have probably taken a hit, right? So Glaze in space, to me, does struggle sometimes changing direction and being able to move left or right. And there's other snaps on tape where you see the same thing. Take this next snap here as an example. Glaze straight up just gets beat and this quarterback takes a massive hit. To me, you cannot have this. Now, to be fair, there is a tight end here. Maybe that tight end's in his way a little bit. Glaze is basically going to jump set the defensive end on this one. And he's just not quick enough to be able to get there. He's not quick enough to slow down the defensive end. And the defensive end goes right around him. And of course, he takes a pretty nice hit on the quarterback. And then this is the final play to kind of sum that up, right? A slow at processing sometimes. Sometimes doesn't do a good job moving in space. Now here's another one where he expects the defensive end to go upfield. But the second the defensive end realizes this is a running play, the defensive end changes direction. So the second this defensive end changes direction, Glaze should be able to mirror that. He should be able to get right to the inside of this guy and shut this down right here. And the running back should be able to hit this through the gap. But again, you're going to see that defensive end change his direction and Glaze is unable to kind of get there. All right. So this is one of the things I need this guy to continue to work on, continue to develop, is really get that footwork in line where he is able to move left. He is able to move right. He is able to cut these guys off and just kind of stay in front of it. Alrighty, guys. So after that last four or five minutes of this video, you guys may think DJ Glaze is going to end up being a bust. But I want to tell you guys that there's a chance he could still easily work out for the Raiders and be a really good football player. But the big thing with Glaze will 100% come down to coaching. It'll come down to a coach really sitting this guy down and improving the little things. Because as we've talked about already, the way this guy explodes out of his stance is something different. He's so fast, he's so quick, and he moves well in pass pro, right? And here's another good example. So Glaze on this one's going to not only hit his landmark, but it's a good example of what happens when you do hit your landmark. When you end up getting to that spot first, number 19 here has to make a decision. He can either go inside or he can go outside. But because Glaze is in the perfect spot to take either or, this defensive end is not going to be able to win because Glaze now not only got to his landmark, but he's good enough to mirror guys. So on this one here, if you guys really focus on number 19, he's going to give a jab to the inside. He's going to do a fake move towards the inside, also referred to as a hezzy move, and it doesn't work. Right, so number 19, what he's trying to do is he's trying to fake Glaze to the inside, and he's trying to chop him back to the outside. Now, certain offensive linemen in the NFL would fall for this. When 19 goes inside right there and he fakes it, some offensive tackles, maybe that aren't fast enough to get to the landmark, they might overset themselves up to the inside, and now to the outside, because they're not at the landmark, the defensive end may be able to chop them and hit that outside. Right, so again, there's traits on tape. And let me show you guys another example of something this guy can improve on. See, on this play right here, he's not going to pick up the guy to the outside. And the play is going to end up losing about a yard. But this is such a coachable moment right here. This, these are things you can definitely improve on. These are things you'll get better at. Right, it's really a coach coming together and making you understand what you have to do in every single given play. This play right here, 
is an example of something that's coachable, right? All you got to do is get your hands out here, uh, push this guy outwards. The left guard's going to reach up to the guy here. And honestly, because number 11 is going to end up following number two here, as long as Glaze sets up here and the running back makes the cut, depending on what this defensive lineman ends up doing and how the guard ultimately seals him off, this is probably a touchdown. It requires Glaze to get to that guy on the edge of the play, right? So just a little bit of improvement, a little bit of coaching is going to go a long way with the guy like Glaze. Now, another thing Glaze does a really good job at is his grip strength. Phenomenal. I think it's a trait that some people kind of overlook at times. What grip strength means is when he's able to actually lock his hands in, when he gets a hold of the shoulder pads, when he gets his hands to the inside chest plate, he does a phenomenal job holding his ground. People are usually unable to break that contact. So that's one of the things this guy has going for him. He's strong and he is quick. And I do think when you're an offensive lineman that's strong and quick, you have upside. You have the potential to be a really good football player. You just got to really come together and really just develop. And I think with Glaze, that's the thing you have to keep in mind. I don't think this guy's starting for the Raiders in 2024. Now, of course, him, Munford, and Wagner can battle it out and let the best man win. Something tells me Glaze will not be the day one starter. I think he just has to continue to develop. And do not underestimate that fact right there. Guys develop, guys get better, guys start over time. I think Glaze is a good fit for a guy that could possibly come in and eventually start down the line. Now, I also want to point this last thing out before we end the video. Tom Telesco told us Glaze's senior bowl tape was a lot better. I have requested the tape if I get that here over the next week. I'll make a second video and I'll pin it down below where we actually talk about Glaze's senior bowl tape specifically. And I'm not talking about practices. I'm talking about the actual game. Which apparently Telesco said is a lot better because a lot of the guys that Glaze is playing with right now, they're accountants, let's just be honest. And that's including the offensive linemen on Maryland. Generally speaking, most of those guys are not NFL caliber players. At the Senior Bowl, he had a lot more help because he had NFL caliber players next to him. So we may ultimately come back and do a second video on Glaze. I hope you guys enjoyed this first one. If you did, consider subscribing. It was a little bit quicker than I ultimately wanted to, but you know I don't want to get too negative with Glaze because there are a lot of negative things on tape. Like we didn't really talk about his leverage. You know, sometimes he's a little high. You see a couple of these snaps here. He's a little high. He gets controlled. Guys kind of get off the block. But again, these are all coachable, and he will get better at these things with reps. But it's just a matter of time until it actually happens. It's just a matter of time until a coach actually coaches these little things out of him and he develops and he actually becomes a hopeful, competent player for the Raiders. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time with another video.